Which is it? Do we have to take action or not? Yes, you have to take action. Your actions are your thoughts in motion. So let's talk about tips for manifesting love and money, two of the most important popular topics that I find audience members raise their hand and ask questions about. And what I want to do in this session, given that the month's theme is Thoughts Become Things, is kind of parlay these two end results into a lesson on our thoughts becoming things with an emphasis on the all important aspect of showing up and taking action, baby steps, literally after the secret came out. I remember getting emails from people asking me, so if there's a universe and it loves us and our thoughts become things, uh, is it necessary to show up in the physical world or, or does that demonstrate a belief that the universe might not hit the home run for me, so I need to be there, you know, to kind of cover for the universe. And there were many people who thought action was not necessary. In the questions I got, I'm having a fight with my friend. Which is it? Do we have to take action or not? Yes, you have to take action. Your actions are your thoughts in motion. They're even more powerful than your words. Your actions are your thoughts that will become things before your words, that will become thing before, things before your thoughts. So it's all thoughts become things. But yes, if you want change, you must physically act because you are that part, that, that moving part in the equation that gets the universe engaged. You take a step, the universe takes 10,000. So this is what we're talking about today. We're going to use love and money, two really popular and understandably so, end results in the world that are highly spiritual. Don't think money is not any money as an end result in alignment with your happiness and your overall rocking life is every bit as spiritual as wanting more love in your life. Okay, it's just got a bad rap, you know, from people who use their physical senses alone to interpret the world around them. This is eating of the forbidden fruit. And, and using your physical senses, you think, you know, if I get a few more coconuts, somebody else is going to have a few less. Because we live in a finite world. We do not live in a finite world. Your success will breed the success in others who see you as an example and as the shining light. So let's get to it. We're going to talk about taking action um, in two different types of ways, using love and money as um, the, the examples. Okay. So first, I want to talk about demonstrations, acting as if. If you're a student of metaphysics, you've heard of this already, but I'll explain. Then I'm going to talk about baby steps. Totally different. Acting as if, demonstrating to your inner witness that you believe that your dream is inevitably about to come true, or acting as if, demonstrating to the universe, you believe, you show off physically as if your dream already came true. Versus baby steps. You taking action in the direction of your dreams. Two very different types of action. Both are super powerful. Um, the most powerful is moving towards the direction of your dreams. But let me talk about the least powerful first, and that is playfully pretending that your dreams are about to come true or that they already came true. Hope I made that distinction. Demonstrations versus baby steps. Okay. Demonstrations. This is where you are playfully pretending of the imminent arrival or the past arrival, the prior arrival of a big dream. You're doing these playful actions, these acts of faith that many books teach about to create a heightened sense of expectation, to install beliefs that speak of your inevitable success or your prior success, and to kind of get you in a zone of, this could happen. This is me. This is my life. Your inner witness sees a physical demonstration, and while it is watching you playfully pretend, it's telling 
you, it's telling your higher self that, that this isn't the same old, same old. You suppress, squish, bulldoze, and liquefy any invisible limiting beliefs you may have had that said, I'm not worthy. It can't be me. I can't do this. By demonstrating, you're showing your inner witness, hell to the yes, this is me. This is what I can do. This is what I'm getting ready for. This is who, this is the world I live in. So if you had invisible limiting beliefs that said, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. Your inner witness sees you behaving as if you were worthy in a playful way. It's so easy to trick your inner self. Scientists tell us that the your inner witness, they don't use that term, um, doesn't know the difference between a real physical event and an imagined physical event. Even though when you're imagining it, you know it's not real, your inner witness doesn't know. So I, you don't even need science to know that. You can just feel it. Thoughts become things. And if you're demonstrating that your inevitable abundance or Romeo or Juliet is showing up, you're convincing yourself. You're erasing invisible limiting beliefs that you didn't even have to know you you had. You don't have to know what your invisible limiting beliefs are to kick their bad guy booty. Okay. You just have to know what beliefs you want to install. And in the very near future, I'm going to do a mini manifesting workshop next month, just about installing empowering beliefs. And we're going to talk about demonstrations to a degree and some other concepts about beating invisible limiting beliefs without even figuring out what they were. Don't go looking for them. You'll start installing them. So your inner witness sees you playfully pretending. And unlike baby steps, which sometimes, like, what should I do? I don't even know what my dream is. How do I take action on my dream? When it comes to playfully pretending, you can always do that. That's one of the, the benefits of demonstrations and acting. Is if You can act as if you're in love. You can act as if you're happy. You can act as if you're rich. You can act as if you're healed healed. You can act as if you're healed. Even if you don't know how you're going to get there, even if you don't have anywhere to go, you can playfully pretend as I'm about to illustrate through an example from a woman. Props to you, dear sweet lady. I mentioned you in my Leveraging the Universe book and, and Rhonda was so inspired, uh, the creator of The Secret. She brought you my story that you shared, the story that, let me tell you, so I'm on my first world tour and I am speaking about leveraging the universe and engaging life's magic. And I am taking it to another level because infinite possibilities has already been released and the notes from the universe are going and I'm in Australia and it's towards the end of my first world tour. It took a couple of years, only 24 cities in that world tour that included uh, the Southern hemisphere, Australia and New Zealand. And I'm in Brisbane, I'm quite sure. And I used to host private dinners after my day long workshops for those who wanted a little bit, you know, more time in the zone. And everybody would share a little bit. And I, there was this wonderful lady at the dinner and she was saying, you know, this stuff so works. I've been doing it naturally my whole life before I even found out about you, Mike, before there was even the secret. I, this was even before the secret was released. Okay. This was 2003, 2004. And she said, you know, I've always been positive and I've been into these metaphysical books and I knew I needed to do more than just theoretically read. And what she most wanted in her life at this stage was a romantic partner. And there was none on the radar. So she said, I started demonstrating. I started acting as if. And she said, I stopped sleeping in the middle of my king size bed. And I started sleeping on my side, leaving room for my boyfriend. There was no boyfriend. She was pretending. I cleaned out one of my two master bedroom closets and made room for his stuff, completely bare. You know, And that's not easy for any of us to do. You start filling up all of your closets and garages and attics if you've got them, right? With stuff you never really need to see again. So one of them was completely cleaned out just for him. But there was no him. She started parking on her side of the two-car garage so that there would be room for his car. There was no his car. People have taken this further. They, they will set out a place setting for dinner. You know, they might make themselves dinner, you know, microwave or goulash or whatever, and set a place for your partner, even though you have no partner. You might not put food on their plate just yet. They're coming in late from work, you know, whatever. But just play. Just pretend. 
playing make-believe is the fastest way to believing. Playing make-believe is the fastest way to believing, and believing is the fastest way to receiving. That's what demonstrations are about. Um, you can go and buy perfume or cologne for your beloved before you even know who they are. Don't tell the, the, the cashier about that. Say, oh, she's going to love this. He's going to love this. Play. Demonstrate. Your inner witness is just like, whoa. And that whoa is going to be so powerfully, emotionally packed. You will set the stage for a physical manifestation of what you've been visualizing to begin with. But now you're taking it up another level with visualization, with demonstrations. The story was so great when this lady was telling me about that, because she said it really works. It really works. I'm like, oh yeah, good. You know, she, she must've found a boyfriend. She was like, and here he is, here is my manifestation. And he's like, yeah, yeah. She says she manifested me. <laughs> um, she had invited her new boyfriend to the Mike Dooley event and brought him to dinner. And, and he was the proof that this stuff works. They were living together. The closet was full. The garage was full. The bed was full. And then I got an email. Oh, six months later, I said, hey, I'm doing the audio recording for Leveraging the Universe. Can I put your story in my book? And she's like, yeah, guess what? We're engaged. And then like a year later, I got an email from Rhonda Byrne or, or two or three years later from Rhonda Byrne after the secret DVD blew up successfully all over the world. Simon Schuster said, hey, can we do the book? And she's like, yeah. And they said, we need more material than this in the video. Can we use that story about the Brisbane lady? And I'll give you full credit. And I was like, well, it's not my story. It's her story. I emailed the lady in Brisbane and she said, absolutely. And guess what? We're married. This stuff works. Okay. So now let me talk to you about taking baby steps, baby steps go beyond demonstrations because baby steps are your best attempt to move in the direction of your dreams. These are legitimate, real steps. And I'll give you a story for these as well in just a moment. But these are not just pretending, although pretending, there's nothing wrong with that. But these are vitally important. Pretending is optional. Baby steps are not. If you want change, you must move in that direction, even though you don't know where to go. So in the beginning, you could be really lost and only have a few little steps to take and a few possible directions that will always seem beneath you. You got to take them anyway. But because you take a, a step, you are suddenly reachable by life's magic and divine intelligence for there to be a serendipity coincidence that, that helps you find out the next step you should take, and then the next step you should take. This gives the universe dots to connect because you're out there in the world going down different paths. Not only do you make yourself available to life's magic, not only do you give the universe a palette of dots to connect because you're taking multiple baby steps, but everything that a demonstration achieves, ramping up expectation, erasing invisible limiting beliefs, installing empowering new beliefs, baby steps do all of that and more. They set you up. They give fodder to the universe for dot connection. They, You take a baby step, the universe takes 10,000. You take another one, 10,000 more. Another one, 10,000 more. Go down three or four or 10 paths at the same time. You got dots and baby steps taken by divine intelligence that you cannot even imagine. Do you see any of that? No, you see lickety split nothing. Nothing. That's the hook of living in time and space. You got to move with this vision, not what your physical senses are showing you. So now let me give you a story or another parallel so that you can kind of put some meat on the bone so that you can kind of color in the dots. And it's not just theory. Take a baby step. I will never forget a pivotal evening in my life with super dear friends in Frankfurt, Germany on their balcony. I was there for the Frankfurt Book Fair, the largest international foreign rights book fair in the world, once a year, Frankfurt, Germany. And somehow, and I was in the t-shirt business at the time with a little self-published book, thinking one day I might write a book. And I lit up to my friends talking about the nature of reality and that we are divine beings, and that we are inclined to succeed, and that we chose this life, and we chose our name, and we chose our parents, either for how awesome they'd be or for how terrible they'd be. Because from the zenith of our magnificence, we knew what we were getting into, and we knew how it would serve us, and we knew how we would avail ourselves of love and magnificence and discover our power. 
So, uh, and then all of a sudden I just stopped. And I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. This is what I, I, to expound upon the nature of reality, to just let it pour through me. And this is when I'm selling t-shirts and gifts for a living with my mother and brother. Uh, it seems so incongruent. I mean, granted, the t-shirts had our messages on them, but it seems so incongruent. And I, and I just remember thinking, wow, that's clarity. But it's like, how the hell would I ever do that, you know? And so I remember that idea was so emotionally charged. Uh, I gave it merit. I gave it credibility. I entertained it beyond. And I remember thinking, well, what would that be like if I was to do that for a living? Expound on reality. Clearly, you know, this is a, a simple brain working, but it's how we typically do it when we mess with the cursed house. Clearly, I'll write a book. It'll be an incredible New York Times bestseller that sells millions of copies, that pays me millions in royalties. I'll be hobnobbing with my publisher in New York City or California or wherever. I'll have foreign rights like I was learning about in Frankfurt on that visit. It was a playful visit to Frankfurt. So anyway, I will write a book. It'll be published by a giant publishing house. It'll have international rights. And, and, and that'll be how I do this for a living. So I drafted a book. It took forever. It took years. I worked on every weekend and in the summer. And, and in the end, it was like 60 pages. And it was really, really bad, really dry. No stories, just me pontificating about the nature of reality. Um, not, not like today, right? I, right. Okay, good, good. So then, um, as we liquidated, liquidated the t-shirt business, and I'm like, oh, crud, what am I going to do with my life? I've got this book that really sucks. Let me circulate my accountant's resume. My message here, when it comes to baby steps, is diversify. Okay, That's my lesson here today when it comes to my tips for inviting, my tips for manifesting love and money. When you take baby steps, don't just take them, but diversify. Okay, speed it up, Mike. So I circulated my accountant's resume thinking I'll get the, the fear of running out of money out of my life and then I can further pursue my book. Um, that didn't go so well. I couldn't get an interview by anybody. So I started sending out free emails. That's creative writing. Not my dream, but I thought, you know, I needed that at that point in my life. Send out motivational emails, play around with this new thing called the Internet. Once a week, Monday morning motivators. That went nowhere fast until a year later, I wrote the first note from the universe. Um, after writing notes from the universe, even though my dream was to be a big time New York Times bestselling author, it's like that wasn't happening. So I diversified, circulated a resume, sent free emails, built out a website to support these emails from Mike. I created a shopping cart. None of that really went anywhere, but it was filling in the blanks, giving the universe more dots to connect, okay? It doesn't matter what road you go out, start out on. It won't be the road you arrive on when it comes to following your dreams. It doesn't matter what road you start on. So pick any dang road and start and go down many paths at the same time. You don't have to be heroic and say, this is the path and I'll write the book and Oprah will love it and I'll live happily ever after. So I, I, I did all these things, built a website, Ask Mike Forum, a village, a community, a shopping cart, sold products, sold my old self-published book, never did that well. I asked for help. I did an audio program. I started speaking for hire. Very few people hired me. A couple hundred bucks for a fee, 20 minutes to their local Orlando business. A few bigger companies hired me. I started, uh, I started holding workshops at Unity Churches. Uh, all of this, one thought led to another, led to three, led to four. And now I'm going down many paths, unbeknownst to me, creating kind of this amazing foundation for the punchline in a minute. Uh, so I was holding these workshops at Unity Churches. That led to a world tour. Meanwhile, I'm self-publishing Notes from the Universe books because now I'm writing notes every day. Self-published, not my dream. Um, I appeared in The Secret. Rhonda invited me, as I said. Um, and finally, 10 years, 10 years. No, it doesn't have to take that long. It took me that long, but boy, was it worth it. 10 years after that moment on the balcony where I would write a book and it would blow up in a great way. 
Infinite Possibilities came out. 10 years, 10 years. And because of all else I had done with my notes from the universe and shopping carts and world tours, I had this platform from which to sell it. And it debuted on the New York Times bestseller list. And that book was my first major published book that's not just fluffy notes brought out by a New York publisher, a global with a global reach. And 10 years since that day, which brings us to right here and now, there's a total of 16 books, total of 17 books plus that one, 17 books, a few were self-published, seven were with the New York publisher, and another, do the math, with Hay House, because I diversified. So not only do I urge you to take action, but I want, in baby steps, but I want you to diversify. This is not quitting. This is not settling for less. This is making you a lightning rod for magic and miracles. These ideas of playfully demonstrating, acting as if, and baby steps will work for any end results, not just love, not just money. Okay. And what I also wanted to impart in this mini manifesting workshop is that you not obsess on that which is missing in your life. I get it. Maybe money is that big thing you most feel like you need right now. Maybe it's love right now, but don't obsess on any end result. Your life is more than money. Your life is way more than a romantic interest. Your life is so many other things. So while you're doing what I'm sharing with you, continue to enjoy all of the other venues in your rocking life. As this note from the universe said, the best way to find love which incidentally is just as true for finding money, is to focus less on these byproducts of a life well lived. That's what you want, a life well lived that will have money, that will have love. Focus less on these byproducts of a life well lived and more on manifesting a life well lived. So don't make your life all about filling in those holes. That's part of it. That's okay. You can live deliberately and you're going to get those things and you'll get them faster when you demonstrate, act as if, and continue enjoying the rest of your amazing rocking life. I can tell you these have served me so well. When love finally showed up, holy mackerel, everything else was already taken care of. It's like, come on in, baby. Okay. So, um, got some homework for you. Here's your challenge. I'm challenging every one of you to do something new this week, physically, either a demonstration or many. You don't have to do just one or a, a, a clever baby step. Now, because I'm urging you to, to diversify, I want this baby step, step to be one you have never taken in the direction of love or money. If those are on your radar or pick another end result. I want a baby step this week, a baby step in a direction, doing something you've never done before in the direction of your heart's desire, money, love, or whatever it is. Okay. So I want you to do something this week physically in the direction of your dreams, either playful demonstration and, or, or many, and, or a diversifying baby step that you have never done before. Okay. Um, tell us below. We love your comments. Tell us below this video right now what this talk has meant to you, um, how you're going to commit this week, and then come back later on in the week and tell us you did it. You did it. You did it. Feel good. Have fun. You don't, you're not, you're not vulnerable. You're not weak. You're an ancient gladiator of love and joy.